Hello and welcome to Pop Along RC and today we are talking team associated RC10 B2, B4, B6 and uh, the old RB10. So when it comes to two-wheel drive buggies, the uh, RC10 is one of the most famous platforms. Um, here on table, I have got uh, the RB10 B2. Um, this one here is a B4, and this one here is a B6.1. So we've got two, the four, and the six. And then over here, we have got the car that I've been running uh, recently on the channel, the ready-to-run RB10. And uh, there's a reason why I've brought that one out today, just so you can compare it to these other cars. So let's start off with the first car, which is the B2. So the B2, in comparison to these other cars, looks uh, quite a bit different. So the first thing that you will notice is the spoiler actually also holds the shell in place. Um, which is a feature you don't see very often these days. Then, other things that you will notice about this car. This car is a rear motor, two wheel drive, tub chassis, the battery is mounted down the middle of the car, which means you can split your receiver ESC either side, servo at the front, um, pretty standard setup. Now, if we actually have a look at the front of the car here, we will notice that these um, shocks and springs are very narrow, very thin. So, with the tow and the camber adjustments, the turnbuckles here, they both connect behind the front shock tower, um, which is a feature you don't see in the later buggies. So if we move on to the B4, and take the shell for this one, Again, we are looking at a tub chassis, battery mounted down the middle, motor is at the back, two wheel drive, and on this one, the toe is uh, behind the shock tower, whereas the uh, camber is set to the front of the shock tower. And that is a slightly more conventional way of having those set up and that is repeated in the later buggies. Now, looking at this tub chassis and the way the compartments are separated, the thickness, the density and the shape, it is very similar to this one here. Now, this is the RB10 and if I take the shell off of this one and take a look at what we've got, we have got an extremely similar layout to the B4. Lots of similarities between these two cars. However, this car also shares some features with the B5, which I haven't got here, but also it looks quite similar to the B6. So the styling of the rear wing, very similar to the rear wing here on the B6 and if you have a look at the front ends of these cars they are very similar so we're looking at the way the turnbuckles are positioned um, and set up at the front and actually even the styling and the shape of the front wishbones is extremely similar uh, this one here you've got two adjustments for 
shot position, whereas this one's got three. But scale, size, shape, and angle, very, very similar to the B6 there. The shocks, again, on the RB10 are a little bit thicker, a similar size to the ones that you'll find on the B6, whereas over here, the B4 and the B2 definitely have thinner shocks. However, if we get under the shell now of the B6, this is a B6.1, okay? And uh, where this varies is, the motor is no longer positioned, hanging out the back of the car. It's actually been moved forward, and this is called a mid-motor car. So the motor is mounted, bringing the center of gravity further forward, giving you better balance um, around the track. What I was finding when racing this car, so when you get on the throttle, the weight wants to shift back. And because you've already got quite a lot of weight over the back where the motor is, it wants those front wheels to pick up. When the front wheels pick up, you can't steer because the wheels are in the air. Um, so I was finding, especially on carpet racing, that on acceleration, there was not a lot of grip at all. So if you actually take a look here, you can see that we've got loads of weights packed in to try and get as much weight further forward in this car as possible. Whereas with the new generation of cars, they all tend to be uh, mid-motor cars, therefore they've got a better weight distribution, uh, especially for carpet racing, these cars perform much, much better. So over the past few months, I have been running the RB10 and I've had some great success with what is a ready to run. So, if you were to pick up an old buggy, maybe a B1, maybe a B2, B3, B4, or even a B5. So when running these rear motor cars, performance is going to be limited, especially when you come up against these mid-motor cars. Um, for the money, out the box, ready to run, I personally would grab the RB10 over a B4 or a rear motor B5. However, if you can get hold of self a cheap um, B6 second hand, that might be a good option for you if you were to get into racing um, because they are a little bit more competitive, um, especially on carpet tracks, which in the UK with the weather that we've got, that is the most reliable form of racing we have in the UK. Uh, because the weather outside isn't particularly good. Although the weather is looking up and we're hoping to head outside and get these cars on track. So in the next couple of videos, we're gonna be looking at whether for you, the best purchase would be a ready to run like the uh, RB10 or trying to get hold of a second hand race buggy like this B6.1. Um, that series is looking to kick off over the next couple of weeks. So if you're interested in getting into RC buggy racing and you want to know what's best for you, whether it's going to be a ready to run or uh, a second hand buggy, do stay tuned, like, subscribe, hit the old ding dong bell and all that sort of stuff. And hopefully um, you'll join us on the journey and find out what we think and what we find out along the way.